Hello and welcome to chapter nine. Um, the overall concepts in this chapter are quadratic functions and equations. So today we're going to look at lesson one, quadratic graphs and their properties. So we need to start off first identifying what a quadratic function is. That is a function that can be written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where the value of a cannot be equal to zero. Um, so this is a form that we have in chapter eight we've been studying. We have uh, talked about how to um, factor that out, you know, how to use FOIL or to unfoil that. Um, so in this chapter, we're going to actually study the graphs that those things make. This form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, is actually called the standard form of an equation. Now, the simplest quadratic function is y equals x squared. All right, so the value of a here is 1, and we don't have a bx plus c here. We call this the quadratic parent function. So this is the most uh, basic form it can be. Now, how we uh, take care of this is we want to graph it by making a table of values. So I am simply going to create an xy table here, which you know I can pick any value for x, and then I see what the value for y is. And I don't need a ton of points, I just try to space them a little bit. So negative two squared is four, zero squared is zero, and two squared is four. Now I come over here and I graph those. So what I'm gonna do then is I'm going to choose a slightly, um, well, I might try it with this here. Over negative two, up four, put a circle, or a dot, sorry. That didn't exactly work how I was thinking, so we'll, we'll just make our own. Um, over zero, up zero and over two up four. Now, if I were gonna have done negative one, negative one squared would have been one. One squared would have been one. And the reason I do this is because I want you to think about this. This is not going to be a straight line connecting my dots. We are going to end up more with a curved, U shape. And if our graph were bigger, you would be able to see that curve extend up faster and faster. Okay, so this is the parent function. All right, this is the most basic form. Now, if we go on and we look at this next page, the graph of a quadratic function is a U shaped curve called a parabola. And right there is the key, U-shaped. So I'm not gonna wanna see a lot of straight lines. I'm not gonna wanna see any straight lines with this. It's gotta have that U-shaped curve. All right, so we're gonna use a table to draw two X squared minus three. So I'm gonna start by making my table and this right here is the equation that I am trying to graph. So I am going to, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a negative two, a negative one, zero, um, and one for sure, okay? So if I plug in a negative two, negative two squared is four, Four times two is eight. Eight minus three is five. If I, again, coming back up here to this, if I make x negative one, negative one squared is one. One times two is two. Two minus three is negative one. 
If I make x zero, zero squared is zero, zero times two is still zero, zero take away three is negative three. And if I make x one, one squared is one, one times two is two, two minus three is negative one. Now I hope you're starting to see a little bit of a pattern emerging here. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph it so that I can identify some key features. So I'm gonna go over negative two, up five. Over negative one, down one. Over zero, down three. One, negative one. Now, if you start to pay attention here, you should see we sort of have a uh, reflection over the y-axis. So you can see that everything on the left side should be a mirror image of everything on the right side and vice versa. So if I would have done a 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 3 is also 5. So you start to see that there are points across, in this case, the y-axis that are mirror images of each other. So again, if I were going to draw this, I'm going to avoid the straight lines. And you can kind of see, sorry, a little crookedy and wobbly there, that uh, U start to appear. All right. Now, when we look at these graphs, our Note is to, to really look at the properties of them. So in this, I see that the vertex, the vertex is either the highest or lowest point. In this case, it's our lowest point. Nothing will be graphed lower than that point. That is zero, negative three. So we always write it as an ordered pair. The minimum or maximum is the next question. What it's saying here is, is this vertex point a minimum point on your graph or a maximum point on your graph? Well, this time the vertex is the lowest point we're gonna have, so it is a minimum. And one thing to note is that if A is greater than zero, the graph is going to open up. and our vertex will be a minimum. Now, I don't have this on here, but something that you may want to note and you may want to uh, jot down here somewhere is if I say to you, I'm going to change color just so we can see this, if it is instead, if it were a maximum, that would mean uh, that A would be less than 1. Or actually, I should say less than 0. Um, it'd be a negative. Uh, the max, if it's a maximum, the graph opens down. And the vertex is a maximum. So basically, I would take this and I would have plotted something up here and it's going to open down. Um, and we'll practice some of those as well. All right, the axis of symmetry is the fold or the line that divides the parabola into two matching halves. That, for example, is where I would put my mirror to see the two mirror images. So the axis of symmetry in this case is where the value of x is equal to 0. So the axis of symmetry is where x equals 0. Now we will have cases coming up where the axis of symmetry will be something other than the y-intercept. Or not the y-intercept, the y-axis, sorry. All right, the domain. Now the domain is the set of possible x values. So, and this is the same for any parabola. So the domain, I can actually do all real numbers. I can make, so all real numbers, meaning I could pick any number for the value of x, okay? The range, however, 
is dependent upon where our minimum and or maximum occur. So in this case, the range, we're going to refer to it as the function of x, is, okay, notice we're back down here to this. The smallest value it can be is negative 3, so it must be a number greater than or equal to negative 3. Now, I want you to pay attention because this is an important piece. You need to make sure this is how you're writing your range. Now, if it were a maximum, we would say it would be less than or equal to whatever that maximum point is. But what this is saying is we have identified the lowest point at which we can go on the on, as our y value and everything else that y could be, no matter what x is, x can be anything, y is going to have to be larger than a negative 3. All right? The y-intercept, and now notice there is always exactly one y-intercept. So the y-intercept is where it touches the y-axis. So again, in this particular situation, the y-intercept happens to be the vertex. Now, the x-intercepts, um, usually when we get to this question, what they're asking you is, how many x-intercepts are there? In other words, does this graph touch the x-axis at no places, does it touch it in one spot, or does it touch it in two? In our situation, our graph touches the x-axis in two places. So we would say that we have two intercepts. Now in this particular situation, those two intercepts are not nice numbers. They're, in other words, they're not whole numbers or integers in this situation. But I can identify that there are two x-intercepts. All right. So just make sure you take a little time and you're understanding vertex, minimum, maximum, what we mean by the axis of symmetry. You understand how you can use an equation or a function, create a table, and plot those points. Um, again, I cannot emphasize enough that when we are doing these, we are getting a parabola, which is a U-shape. So I should not be seeing these nice straight lines when we're graphing these. All right, until... Uh, the next class. Uh, that is the end of this, and we will continue here the next time you have class. Thanks so much. Have a great day.